The following program is rated TV MAL. It contains strong language and is intended only for mature audiences. Hey guys, welcome back to another podcast. My name is Stacey and this is my journey of becoming a content creator. Today's guest is All Black Ari Saver and we really get to know him as a person. We can see what he does on the field, but it's off the field where he's making his biggest moves. I guess it's like when people are right into biographies. We want to know about the person. We see exactly what they get up to either on the court or on the field but it's about what they do off the field is what we're interested in. And this podcast definitely brings you that value. Ards is not only an all black, but he's a father, entrepreneur, businessman, and so much more. And you're going to find out a lot of detail about Ards and what he gets up to off the field and what his plans are for the future as well. So please remember to give this video a like and hit the subscribe button to help this channel grow. I just know this potty will help so many others. So by hitting the like button, we'll give it an opportunity to get in front of this to help them as well. Thanks again for watching and maybe even comment below where in the world you're watching this video. It's always interesting to know where people are watching these kind of videos. So thanks again and let's get into it. For the weekend, getting blinded by the lights on the rise as we cultivate the finer things in life. Part on ice, ride the wave till we evade the sharks and escape the past. Trying to see the wasted time taper off like weight loss. Staying sauce with the poets, stoic under pressure till I grow. Yes, you know it is the go. Only when it's standing on both sides Cause when the tide lifts, all boats rise Now look alive uh. What's up, my brother? How are you today, bro? Yeah, How are you? Good. I'm good, my brother. I'm good. Thank you so much for jumping on the potty, bro. It's nice to have you on here, and it's nice to connect again. I love it all. 100%. This is like our fourth connect this week. Bro, <laughs> I'm our partners are going to start going, what's going on here? Yeah. Mine's okay, because she's in Wellington, but the family might be like, Dad, where are you going for the fourth time this week? <laughs> and that's true, bro. So like you are, you've been in Auckland for the last two weeks. Obviously, you're up here to, for the All Blacks. Um, how's that been, bro? How's it, how's it been away from the family for so long, bro? Yeah, no, nah, it's um, obviously this is like my job and I'm always blessed to, to be able to play for the All Blacks, bro. But, um, you know, like when you've got kids now, it, it makes it a little bit harder mm. um, being away from the kids, bro. So mm. um, it's not, it's they, they've, they've been coming up now and then mm. and, and while I've been in camp and stuff like that. So that's kind of breaking up. You know the yeah. the time away from them, but um, they're out tomorrow, so I'm awesome. really looking Are forward they? to seeing the kids and yeah. and sass. But um, yeah, man, it's been good so far, man. Like, you know, one bleed one, and um, mm. hopefully uh, win the rest. So yeah, fingers yeah. crossed, man. Yeah, absolutely. And so now, like, um, are they sort of your drive as well? You know, we've always got to find out why. Is there your kids and fans your sort of why now in terms of what you do? And every time you put the boots on, it's I'm doing it for me, not only for me, but for my fans as well. Yeah. Um, they're, they're, they're at the top of the list, man. Like, mm. like I'm honestly always like so passionate, like family's everything to me. And mm. um, I've said that in the past where like I'd say it, but like would put other priorities ahead. But like where I'm at now in my journey in, in life, man, like family's everything. And mm. whatever I do is to hopefully impact my family in a positive way and obviously mm. doing this and – provides for my family playing well mm -hmm. keeps me in the game so mm. um you know as long as i can do that and then hopefully create some side hustles on the on the go and mm -hmm. create another some other, other income streams then you know rugby won't actually just be the main income stream i, I can just yeah, wow. you know, tap into the creative side but yeah, they're my passion bro they're, they're my why mm. oh man i you know as well as all my teammates and stuff like that but mm. uh, my family's yeah it's the foremost, eh? foremost yeah also. yeah that's it eh? and, and i love how you talked about you, rugby is not only your number one priority i mean yeah. you've obviously got family rugby's yeah. a big part of you but they're, they're saying out there at the moment you know the saying is you're more than an athlete yeah. um so you just talked about a side hustle so we'll get to those a little bit yeah, more yeah. about that shortly at the moment bro but you see a lot of stuff in the media at the moment or a lot of things that's happening particularly to athletes in their mental well-being and all that sort of stuff like that what's your thoughts around you know for example um you know the olympics one of the, the most amazing gymnasts out there you know um she had to pull out because he wasn't helped with that mouth yeah. mental health even locally um you know new zealand cricketer as well she's sort of withdrawn herself from a from that sort of you know there were the test cricket going on as well traveling overseas because she wanted to get herself right what's your sort of thoughts what's your what's your insight into that sort of bro I think it's awesome, man. And I think it's just the new wave of athletes that are coming through. Mm. Um, obviously, you know, we, in the past, we've had athletes that go and um, and just will park up how they feel inside and put others first. And 
I'm not saying that's bad, but we'll just do it at their own expense of their own well-being or mm. their own ha- happiness. And man, seeing um, seeing athletes come out and and share around their well-being and mm. putting their well-being first, it's awesome, man. And 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 I know it will encourage other people not, that are not even athletes to mm. to make sure that they're okay first before they go and do other things. Um, mm. Man, I love it. I love the more than an athlete. I love athletes coming out. I love athletes creating content. I love athletes just doing other things outside of their sport. Mm. Um, Because it's just, because I personally love it and it's just cool to just see people uh, creating other things. Mm. And um, obviously this this generation in this world is moving into the digital space Mm. and, and a lot more people are aware, socially aware around what's going on. Um, and just to see athletes actually have a voice mm. and not just stick to their own kind of little box where in the past probably has, um, I think is is inspiring, bro. And and a lot of it's inspiring for myself and, and encourages me to keep speaking my truth in my voice. And sometimes it's hard here in New Zealand and it's hard, you know, when you're in a team sport mm. to actually be an individual and be yourself and, and authentic, you know, standing out and stuff like that. It's, mm. I think there's still a lot of movement in that space, but mm. um, having more and more athletes across all sports um, doing that. Mm. Especially so, yeah. here locally as well, eh? you know. Yeah. You see a lot of it happening over in, like, the States and, you know, a lot, a lot overseas we see on social. Everyone, you know, we it's funny how it's weird, eh? Like, we champion, like, the American sports. Yeah. We're like, yo, let's get into it. You know, they, and they're just, like, you know, amping up the crowd. <laughs> but imagine if you try to do that in All Blacks, going to be like, calm down. <laughs> hey, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. isn't that sort of weird? Like, is it? do you think it's a tall poppy syndrome issue here in New Zealand? Or what yeah, do you think it is? Or is man. it, is it an, an eternal thing with, with sport itself here in New Zealand? Or... I don't know. I think it's just tall poppy syndrome in general in New Zealand, man. Like mm. everyone's like that. When someone's succeeding, it's in our natural behavior to like automatically be like, bring them back down. Oi, what are you doing? Like be humble. And I've had this conversation a lot, but like if people are being their true authentic self mm. and if that's looking like expressing themselves, being out there, mm. they're happy, bro, let them be. Like what's that got to do with me? Like, you know, if, Someone out there is dancing on the field, or and he's happy and he's carving, and I'm getting angry about it. Maybe I should look at, not look at the finger pointing at that person, but look at the three looking at myself. Yo. You know, so um, I think it's the tall poppy syndrome in New Zealand, man. And then it's not just with sport, man. It's just with life in general. Mm. People succeeding, or you know, like you grow up in a community that's so used to one way, and then you decide you want to do something else mm. to break that chain. Nah, those. Sometimes it's the closest people that tell you, bro, get back. Now, what are you doing, bro? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, come back here, come you know? Back, like, don't be bots. Bro, like, you know what I mean? You know? and, like, and that's the difference of us being able to try new things. Mm. And, like, you, you look at, like, a ceiling and we always, like, for my, in my mind, I was just like, okay, I'm just going to go to university, mm-hmm. going to get a good job, earn a good income mm. when I was young. That was the ceiling. And now, like, through education and through the digital space and learning, like the ceiling's gone over here. Yeah. And now there's other ways where I'm starting to th- think differently and stuff like that. So, and br- like I remember we talked about as well the 660 example. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it was unknown, it was unheard of, or a New Zealand band or group or artist to, to sell out. That's it. You know, yeah. like um, Western Springs. Right. And it was, yeah. It was interesting, man, because I always thought that, hey, like we, we had like, great New Zealand artists when I was coming through mm. like Scribe and that mm. but like never kind of like you know it was always like just in like the like TV channels and, and, and stuff like that but mm. then 660 are like selling stadiums and yeah. and I've and I've heard a bit about their journey and what they had to go through and mm. be the change and now the ceiling's over here now for yeah. other artists you know yeah. so um, it's amazing bro and then all it takes is that one person or um, someone to do something different, mm. and then that becomes inspiration for the other generation. Yeah, exactly right. You're still going to get your haters along the way, and I guess the same with uh, with rugby and with sport in New Zealand as well. Is whenever you try and do something different or outside the norms, because yeah. I reckon my thoughts is that because people don't understand it, they don't they don't under get it. 
They'd be like, they start hating on it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's like, it, like imagine if you wear something different. Be like, fuck, what are you wearing, bro? Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's whack. But in fact, it's like, who are, who are we to judge somebody else's happiness? That's it, eh? Hey, you know what yeah. I mean? If they want to wear that clothes, then Let go be, for it, man. Bro. If they're happy, they're happy. You know, if that makes sense, yeah. bro. So. And it's also doing other things. It's like, we, you say that, like, you are more than an athlete. Like, you don't, you're not just a rugby player. Fucking, you're an amazing rugby player, absolutely. Mm. But you don't want to be just boxed and saying, that stay in your lane. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're more than that. It's so hard, bro. It's, it's hard, you know, like, even doing this podcast now, sorry, excuse me, and, like, creating content and, like, I've just found a new love for, like, bro, like, just editing and creating content for my, my clothing business, you know? Like, I'm like, yo, I get excited about it, man, and, but, like, there's, there shouldn't be, bro, but mm. there's, like, a line of, like, you know, because I'm playing, and if I go out there and play shit or I don't play to what I usually play, what's the first thing people are going to blame? Mm. Oh, he's doing too many podcasts, mm. or he's do. He's focusing on his claiming too much, trying to sell, you know, like, and it shouldn't be that way, but that's the reality at it mm. at the moment, you know, and mm. and probably the same with coaches and teammates. They're probably looking like, but what's this guy up to? Mm. You know, he should be is, he, is he committed to this? Is he committed or is he focused on rugby? Mm. But like, you know, like I am, it's just that I love for me personally, like doing other things outside mm. of rugby. Mm. Once I've done on my prep, it helps me, you know. So, mm. but I, like you said, it's that like kind of probably the lack of understanding mm. and willing to understand mm. in that space. Because also, you got to think as well. Like when you can fill other people's cups, or you're happier when you do the things that you love to do. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like if if anybody can relate, like hanging out with your friends, or you know, to some people it might just be pulling the curtains closed and just PlayStation the fuck out of it for the next yeah. twenty. You know, they well, doing just, Netflix. Yeah. That's their happy place. It's their happy place. Well, we to judge what they and if it makes them happy and they become a better person, it's cool. It. Let's let, let them roll with yeah, that. Especially you know? with like our suicide rates now right. uh, in New Zealand, man. Like mm. we need to like bro, like stop like just cut the judging, cut the. Mm. It's hard at times. You're like oh, I'm guilty of it. It's not like I'm there, but. You know, there's always times where I remind myself um, every morning, like, like, am I trying to be the best version of myself so that I can be the best person to people, the best husband, the best mm. father? Um, but I just, yeah, like, I may be angry for, at someone for a little bit, but, mm. like, I've got tools that I know that, like, it's like, actually, it's, it's not even his fault. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's me that I have to check myself always. Mm. Mm. There's some things that people don't see, bro, and I got to experience it with you just the other night when we had a catch up. Yeah. Um, it was like it was a shock to me because I'm and I don't experience this on a daily. And you're saying that that wasn't that was a nice thing. That was a nice situation. Yeah, it was. Like man. the example of the situation for the people just to give people reference was that we were just sitting down chatting, like in a like a little sort of sort of like quiet space in the restaurant, and these people just come up, and it, maybe it was probably what I don't know, no later than ten o'clock. Yeah. And some dude just comes rolling up and looks at it and just starts pointing at their rich, their watch on their wrist, going to Artie, bro, you're playing tomorrow. Shouldn't you be in bed? Mm. It's like, bro, he's playing at seven o'clock the next night. Yeah. But then, you know, then there was another drunken lady five minutes after that just comes along. She didn't even really know who Ards was, who you were. Yeah. And then she's like, stay right there. I want to get my phone. I want to have a phone with you. I want to have a photo with you. And just, and you're just like, you know, like that. that's you on the daily. Like yeah. we don't get to see these sort of things. And people, I guess people think that you're public property or because they see you on TV, mm. they feel they they kind of not I don't know if the own is the right word, but yeah. how do you how it do kind you, of it kind of is that way, like and if we don't do the any of what the fans like, oh that art is an arsehole. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and but that's just the reality of what we do and um I've kind of flipped my mind around around that stuff, like you know, like and the person that kind of kept me accountable was my wife, man. Like mm. I'd, when we went out or we'll go out or be out um, people were asking like sometimes like I'd be like ah, complain and mm. stuff it's just like I remember like you you were that one day you were a kid mm. one day and I was like yeah so she kind of like humbled me in that way in that mm. sense so I like um, I'll, I'll say yes or if it's like if I'm with my kids or with my wife or my family mm. out for lunch or dinner, mm. I'll sometimes say no. But if it was if they're kids, mm. then I'm here. But it's real awesome though. Like I learned something cool this week, and and from Israel Adesanya, he mm. came to our um, he came to one of our club rooms awesome. um, with Eugene, and he talked around his preparation, bro, and 
and around like fans and 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 how he deals with that. And he talked around protecting his energy. Right. Wow. Um, and he mentioned bro around like because you know he he just he just when he's in a state of being chilled like he's mm-hmm. chilly vibes, and he's saying for some reason he doesn't know who teaches their fans, but they come in like. Israel, Desanya, just hide. Can I get a photo? Yeah. yeah, like you know, and um, he said that he had a um, he had like a thing around. Um, he used to like when people did that. He used to be like on the energy levels, on the energy levels. Yeah, bro. He was like, yeah, like you know. Then over time, he said it drained him, bro. Mm. Like it drained his energy and it affected his performance. Mm-hmm. So he mentioned that, bro, and I was like, frack, or like. You it's related so to it straight I away. I related to it straight yeah, away because yeah. like when people come up, you like try and be happy when we have promos and mm. we're not feeling up to it and but we have to put on a smile. Promo day is usually a Friday for Friday, you? bro. The day, day before, before game. game. You know, so you gotta like, be high energy all day. High energy, you know, because we're representing our club, but right. does that affect the performance? Is it draining our energy? That's it. spiritual energy and, and our well being. So um that was something really cool I learned. This week, man, and I think I I might try and use that, like you know, like if I'm in a chilled, chilled state of mind and just chilly vibes, and a fan and comes hyped up, hyped yeah. up, I'm just gonna be like, yo, yeah, let's go, mm. take a photo, and then sweet, have mm. a good day. I'm yeah. not gonna be like, yeah, yeah, you know, just it's, to try it out, you know, it drains you, yeah, it might drain me. So yeah, 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 it's something true. cool, bro. That's a good learning, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, they do. Sometimes fans, yeah, they 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 do think they own you, man. Like um, some of us boys in here, like. <laughs> might sound ungrateful but like one of my pet peeves bro around being a professional athlete it's like, like when we go sign stuff and we're happy to sign stuff bro and like, but people don't use their manners mm. you know they just think they're only like Adi take a photo or oh. like Adi come here Adi come here Adi sign this yeah. it's just, man like and I'm t- I'm too nice bro sometimes I don't even say anything I just do it mm. but then there's times when I'm like what's the magic word mm-hmm. what mm. do you say mm. And I sometimes I say it loud because the kids' parents are in behind. So, I, you know, like, mm. cause if I heard my kids saying that and don't right. use their manner, like, bang, clip right. them around the ears, you right. know? Um, but, yeah, that's something that, yeah, around fans. But, hey, yeah, it just is what it is, man. <laughs> that's another, as you're saying, it is what <laughs> it, it is. It is what it is, man. Yeah. <laughs> and that's cool, Brian. So what I want to talk a bit more about as well, you talked about side hustles earlier to, yeah, just before, yeah. bro. So talk <laughs> us more about that. Like, what are you into? So obviously you, you've got your clothing brand. So yeah. what, what's that? Talk us through bro, that, bro. What's your- um, just released our clothing brand, um, ASAV Clothes. ASAV awesome. being short for Adi Savia, pretty much. Yeah. Um, we released our South Collection today, actually. So is this um, collection number? Bro, I don't even know. I, I think it's about think. Like four, right? Yeah, I think four. about round about there. I, I honestly don't even know, man. <laughs> like that's how slack I've been, bro. Like, uh, are you enjoying I, it, bro? I love it, man. Like, not not. We've been in the game for four years, bro. Like, haven't mm. really scaled it properly. We've kind of been real, like, average at that point. But in terms of like the business side of things, learning how to market, uh, like, you know, like the pricings, the dealing with suppliers, mm. like on my own with my wife has been awesome bro and so I've got like the clothing business that I do which we share well being with messages awesome. on, on clothing pretty much and then um, just kind of dabbling in other mm-hmm. other areas where I'm interested in bro love LeBron James and, mm-hmm. and what he does so kind of try to mimic something like that with um, what we have is called the Uncommon Collective awesome um, Talk a bit more about that, bro. Yeah, man. So, like, obviously, uninterrupted is like LeBron James and Maverick Carter and what they've started, and it's pretty much a platform for athletes, right? And for people to be socially aware of what's going on in America and yeah, and just uplifting athletes. And we thought we just mimic pretty much the same and mirror the same yeah. in uh, Australasia, New Zealand. Awesome. Um, pretty much to help serve athletes and because their tagline is they're more than an athlete, more right? than an athlete, you know. So. Just took that inspiration, just started like dabbling mm. in that space. Still haven't kind of like we've we've set in stone, but like really driving the direction that we, we want to go. Mm. We're probably just at the starting point. Awesome. Yeah, so. And so you've got an association with like Mav Carter and LeBron with un- uninterrupted. So how did, bro, how did that go? Yeah, I wouldn't, I, I, wouldn't, that cool yeah, I wouldn't blab on like, you know, like <laughs> bro, so you got posted up on their channel yeah, though. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, They've got almost like a million followers. Yeah. So how did, bro, how did the, how did the conversations nah, man, come about? Like, it, all, it all happened when um, I went to America and USA and um, it was me, Jules and TJ and all our partners, bro, and 
like Sean Marks, the Brooklyn mm-hmm. Nets GM. Yep. You know, he's a Kiwi. Mm. And obviously after end of your tour over in Europe, we went to America, to New York, and he just hooked us up with Brooklyn Nets uh, courtside tickets. Dang. But this was when Brooklyn Nets were <laughs> cocks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we'll get some now. <laughs> but so we went courtside and Sean Marks had a like a um the stadium announcer, the guy, you know, the the yep. MC yeah, yeah, yeah. made sure he looked after us. So we kind of like had him there. Um, he looked after us afterwards. Like we went out partying with him, bro. And then the next week later, we were in there. He took us to the New York New York Knicks game. Oh, and then we went there. And then he got his mate that was the MC there to like help us party. Oh, not help us party to help us Just like sort of around. Guided you to it. Took us to like yeah. party. Bro, hopped in the limousine like <laughs> unreal, bro. But the the guy that the MC at the New York Knicks. <clears throat> like I just connected with him on Instagram, socials, mm. followed each other. And then it wasn't until last year, just started like, like, you know, like doing all my content and around more than an athlete and, mm. you know, around World Cup and just, mm. you know, my podcast stuff and, mm. and how I was saying I inspire, like, oh, my inspiration is LeBron. Mm-hmm. And he must have followed me and seen it and he goes, hey, bro, like I used to work, with, work for Uninterrupted at a, at a high role, linked me to someone else. Oh. And he licked me there. Then I was like, bro, I don't want to get my hands like, surely this is like glitch. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, met this guy called Jimmy mm. uh, Spencer, who was like emailed through. Nothing really happened for like a couple of months, man. Mm. Said that we'll catch up through Zoom. And then, but like, went quiet for a couple of months. I was like, oh, it doesn't really matter. Mm. Like, all good. But then, boom, got an email, Zoom call. Hi. <laughs> bro, and yeah, so got a Zoom call and then. Like it just happened there, and I remember, bro. Like the Zoom call, finished gym, hopped in the car, and I was like, it was like eight thirty in the morning. The meeting, I hopped on at eight thirty, bro, and it was about almost eight forty five. And this time, I didn't really know them, so I was like, bro, don't even waste my time. This like, is a jack up. This is like, not even yeah. a jack up, but I'm like, bro, if you're not busy or you're not keen, don't waste my time. Just mm. tell me, bro. Went to hang up, bro, and then pop. No bro, way. This um this chick jumped on who works for uninterrupted and. She hopped on the chat and then this American like dude, bro, it, was, it was crazy. And me and Joseph, me and Joe were on the chat. And so Joe's your business partner? Yeah, Joe's my business partner right, who, right, right. who helps me run Uncommon right, right. Collective. Yeah, sorry. Cool. Yep. Um, and just started chatting away, man. And like, she was like, you know, this chat, to get an athlete to this chat in the Zoom call, it, like it takes a lot. No way. So oh, bro, when she said that, and she was like, share a bit about me, bro. I just went, Phew. I just poured my heart, bro, just like, just being real honourable, like mm. honouring them for their time and mm. and stuff like that. And then they just pretty much said in, to like come and entry, entry as an athlete for Uninterrupted. Mm-hmm. They usually do the, um, their, what's the, what's the, Sincerely Yours, yep. the letter. Yep. They usually get athletes to do that when yep. they're starting off. And then, so that's where you record a video and just talk about record yeah. a video and then write a letter to whoever you want to write a letter to right, and right. you read it out. Yeah, right. Um, So, that was cool to see. Yeah, that, man, man. I, that I, I awesome. did that, and they got the editing team to do whatever, and then they chucked it up, and man. like with the more than an athlete hoodies, you know, they sent some through, and mm. you know, I just rocked them up, and then featured on their drip. Yes, so, bro, like what they do is amazing, man, and you know, LeBron, you know, opening up his own school, helping unless fortunate kids, mm. paying for their scholarships or tuitions, bro. That's something that I love to achieve or do one day in my. In my life, awesome. man. Yeah, yeah that's so. cool. So what, just to create a school locally or is it some sort uh, of education some, platform? Or some sort of education just to help platform. Uplift just, these. just to help, up, help uplift people, bro. And I think Uncommon's kind of like that way. As long as we're helping and serving people, um, then bro, like that feeds the soul, man. It makes me way that's more it. happier than making money. Bro, that, that's exactly it, right? Yeah. Eh? You know what I mean? Like you're driven by passion, not driven by dollars. That's you know? it, man. And having that Uncommon platform here in New Zealand, I think it's going to go really well because there's nothing really – like that locally yeah. that sort of embraces the athlete and sort of talks about like the little things like I saw a post recently they put up and come and put up about um, Amelie um, about the cricketer you know yeah, the, yeah, yeah you know about her mental well-being and yeah. you know just sort of just saying you you know how you guys support them and That's it's cool because she's one of the best female cricketers in the world man Bro. and for her to, to, to not go on mm. um, the England tour I think mm. like is massive mm. but she put herself first yeah, which is not common, you know. And 
like a lot of people put yeah. the jersey before themselves, yeah, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Which I understand because they, that's, understand, that, yeah. because that's been their dream since they were five, yeah. you know? And everyone's different too, but right. um, for her to make that decision is um, it's pretty inspiring, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, bro, let's go back to. Um, yeah, so I went uh, on this massive rant around how I met. Like, no, because no, I Mav asked that's funny. <laughs> Do you talk to. So, do you chat with Mav and no, some of bro, LeBron and like, personally? He just replied to me like once or twice, bro, but like, wow. you know, like you get your thrills, but. Mm-hmm. You know, he's probably just a normal dude, man, that just does mahi. Yeah. Um, but like, you know, from a kid from New Zealand, you know, like this right. that's pretty gangster. And my older bro, Jules, is a massive LeBron fan, so is I he? just I sent it to him. Yeah, <laughs> <Hey>, look. <laughs> Cha. Oh, he's all good, eh? Yeah. yeah. Delete. <laughs> he would have deleted you. Um, but no, so you're going back to ASAP clothing, yeah, bro. Man. So so I- anybody that's listening, particularly athletes, like you say. As an athlete, you want to get multiple streams of yeah. revenue, not just rely on your paycheck from, yeah. you know, from your sport. Mm. How did you start your clothing brand, bro? Like, what did you do? Like, how did you go about it? Did you do something, like, something locally, or did you go straight offshore? What did you yeah, do, man. bro? So, like, but I had this, I, I had this, I had this idea and vision in my head when I was at school that I was going to own my own business. Oh. Like, and I think I was different, bro. I didn't want to work for anyone. Mm. I was like, I want to be my own boss. I want everything to be on me. Mm. Um. At that time, I thought it was easy, you know, like, mm-hmm. yeah, but sooner learned that it's not. Um, but man, like, pretty much found a local supplier in Hawke's Bay, mm-hmm. created, like, try to create, like, like a Yeezy kind of style. Bro, like, I look back at it, I just, like, man, that's crazy. But it's crazy as though. So, that my first drop, bro, the style that I tried to drop, mm-hmm. it wasn't in back then four years ago. But guess what? It's in right now. <laughs> The like fashion the style, bro, like, <laughs> yeah, trend like, the, like the straight pants up yep. to the ankles, like people, like you know, the flares coming back in, mm. like the long baggy tees, oversized, oversized yeah, box bro. fit tees. Box yeah. Fit. yeah, um, that was my first drop. So, that was we started off a local Hawks Bay supplier for about a year, bro. Like, found that it was expensive, like mm. you know, we weren't making anything. And mm. it's funny, man, we were like, I was looking at like Ice and YKTR, looking at like. Earl's looking at other prices. I'm like, okay, they priced their tea at 80 bucks or whatever. <laughs> then I'm like, create the garments and I'm like, babe, let's price it. So we weren't even like forecasting if a, if a tea costs $10, then you times that by two and a half and then that's where you get your- about your yeah, 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 exactly, and stuff like that. Mm. We don't learn that till last year, bro. Oh, until yeah. I, spent, I messaged I, she's like, bro, this is how you, like you would want to do it. And I was like, Man, I was just guessing my prices. I was just like putting a price on it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. realized we weren't making anything, man. Like, because once you chuck in the freight, then yeah, the, that's you know, it. You've printing. got a couple of costs. Yeah, a couple you know? of costs. So, right. um, so we went from Hawks Base, Hawks Base supplier to then white labeling Ace Color Tees. Right. Oh, relabeling or what is it called? White label? Yeah, yeah, that'll relabel. Re-label so yeah, you're just like that. it. Yeah. And that was the be unique and the and that was when it, it, it popped off, man. Like the be about it. Because did it feel like you're more authentic in that way? Because before you talked about trying to be like yeah, yeah. And, I was, be- and then this one was around like encouragements on the garments, like be you, uh, face it till you make it and be about it. It was like messages that I kind of try and live by or yeah, I've been yeah. through. And that was me, bro. Like went through that. And then that started to sell, and then we we're like, okay, we can we can go because we're selling like BUT we're selling over hun- like 100 tees awesome. each garment so then we're like okay we'll try China mm. we linked up with a uh, um, supplier there and um, went through that until with them and that was awesome but then also it was like are they only they did like 100 uh, minimums minimum, yeah 100 minimums and like yeah it was just started to get too much mm. so now we've scaled right back and um We've just, ICE has helped us find a supplier. Awesome. And then with them, and they've been awesome, bro. Wow. So, like, now it's just around building content, providing value, throwing those left jabs. So, just talk about left jabs, right? What do you mean by that? So, yeah. people that don't live, so I'm giving them yeah, value. Yes. So, if you. Yes, I like that. <laughs> left jabs, bro. This, this and is the Gary V sort of stuff. And this is like a. Um, I'm happy I'm saying this because for like other athletes that probably see like my content or athletes or like my content and think, fuck. Frick Ards is just like promoting himself and he's just like, he's just all about the gram and all about himself, but there's strategy behind it. Mm. Like, so the left jabs is the Gary Vee, or if he's left jab, left dragon, and you throw the right hook. Mm. So left jabs represent like content, providing right. value. Um, right. What's an example of providing value? Like? Providing value, bro, like, um, like the stuff I do for my rehab, yeah. like gym exercises, yeah. um, like 
What else? So just teaching like people about how what your workout is for the day, what, what music you listen to, what right, your culture you're into. Anything that I'm doing, because like, yeah. not to sound real arrogant or bots, but like I know people will like to know what I eat for breakfast, right. what I get up to on my day off, mm. stories, walking the dogs, like mm. you know, like people are interested in. And that's that class as a left hook, a left jab. Yeah, that's class as left jab, just mm. like content, just um, providing valuable value. content. Mm. Um, and Ice always says valuable contents through education and entertainment. And as an athlete, you know, you've already got that leverage because of, you know, like- You've got that platform. That platform. And mm. so all that stuff and all the stuff I do on socials and around that, the lives, you know, like the lives, people get to talk to you live, like player, director, fan. Right. So all that stuff is like left jabs. Mm -hmm. And then the right hook is all the, is when you, you, you all the sales. So when you sell something or uh, involves money. So like obviously my clothing dropped. Mm -hmm. That's the right hook. Right. So you're asking people. I'm asking people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like not even asking people. But just I'm letting just, them know. I'm just letting them know, you know, and yeah. hopefully I've created enough value, enough content. Um, yeah, pretty much enough value for people to be like, man, this guy's like giving me all this. Mm. And it's just that human connection thing. Like, I don't know, like, I don't know how to explain it, but when someone gives you so much value. You want to feel like give back to them. You right? want to give back to them, you know, and, and that's the kind of, business not even business change but just the model that i kind of mm. vibe awesome. with yeah. that's awesome yeah like if that makes sense yeah mm. gary you're exactly right so gary terminology about um jab 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 left hook he's got actually got a book out about that mm. everything about jab 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 is all about giving value like you said is entertainment yeah. or education and entertainment could be something like making you laugh could be something about yeah. providing you know like Watching you go shopping, it dancing, could be dancing, like, you, you know, know like, having fun on TikTok or yeah. um, like a workout, like you saying, this is my workout this for is, the day. Yeah, this, this is the music man. I listen, listen, listen to. This Rugby is highlights. Right. You know, yeah. like using sport. Yeah. yeah. So these are all giving value and this is all entertainment. So when it does come time to, you want to, you know, you're putting something out there that you hope that you're asking the same to the people, this is what I'm mm -hmm. delivering as well. You know, if you feel obliged to be able to make a purchase, then I'm, um, you know, yeah, um, yeah. it's all there for it. So. And and it's actually like, um, like the creating that content and stuff is actually just being your authentic self. Mm. Like, because I know, like, you can get caught in that hype, bro, of yeah. social media and like, like doing it, doing it, and then like you may not feel like you want to do it because of. Sorry, bro. Can we just pause sweet. it for a second? Sorry, bro, we've cut out. Yeah. Sorry, my bro. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We've gone over all the time. Good mates. So, yeah, so sorry, we just had to cut out there for a second just got to reset the cameras, bro. So we were just talking about left, you know, jab, 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 right hook, and so it's a whole Gary V terminology. And one of your things is that you that it's funny when you say you try – it's not about putting content out there to sort of jack to, – to, to say, it's hey, it's about me. Yeah. It's more about I'm actually – there's an a, ulterior motive while I'm doing this, mm. but the players within, like, for example, the All Blacks, they look at you and, and they're like sideways and go, bro, fucking put your phone <laughs> put your phone away. You'll put your – like, you know what I mean? I've talked to you – I think I've had conversations with you and maybe Reeks as well. Like, we want to see you create vlogs. We want to see bro, you go on your so days off. It's so hard though, man, because like I said, we create your vlogs and stuff and putting stuff out there, get on the field and like I trust to – I back myself to perform – some days we just have our off days or, you know, and and then and you just like, – Well, if you play well and the team loses, you still get slayed. Yeah. And you know yeah. what I mean? I'm guessing – sorry to cut you off, but no. you understand, I know what you're going to say is that if we putting out this content and we just happen to play bad that weekend, you know, then they start saying, oh, is he actually willing to play for this – you know, play yeah. the game? and yeah. Or maybe, man, I'm just overthinking and players don't actually think that. But is it is it an old school mentality though? You know, like with the, especially with the game of rugby, you know. Yeah, it's old school mentality, man. Like, and it's not saying old school mentality is bad, but like I I think in the sense is that if we don't move with the times around the space and get to understand that, like, like if we're just gonna like like here's for example like rugby rugby viewership for millennials and generational Zs, but like is like low. Like, oh, so, is it? People love. I hear, um, like my cousins and and people say their kids love basketball, but they don't even they don't even have not even watched the one single full Damn. game of basketball. Nah. They but, just love the whole. But like you, the Bleacher reports it. and whatever the package of like highlight reels of basketball, the content they build around players, the culture, the, the culture, the fashion. Not saying like our culture is amazing, but it's just how can we like, you know. Yeah. monetize that and, and do that in a way where we're still respectful to, you know, like, you know, culture, but. 
That's it as well. And also yeah. players know their worth, right? Yeah, man. Like, you know, like like they make like athletes in America, they they they're allowed to use and make um own their IP, mm. their name, their like like their likeness, mm. you know, and all their and intellectual property. Mm. They they get to use that to create Multiple, yeah, to create revenue. So, so what would you say to an up and coming athlete at the moment? Then, like in the new environment, like yeah. you're saying, okay, let's change the stigma. Yeah. What would you say, encourage oh, them to do? Uh, like, I would encourage the athlete that are into this stuff, or like into the space around like the digital and the the social content, to like, bro, don't be afraid, um, like, and and to start creating stuff. That you like, that you're interested in, not other what other people are, you know. That's such a good point. And figure out what you're good at. Yeah. What so you're you might good not at. be good at you might be great in front of the camera, but you might not be good at writing. That's or you it. might be good at podcasting. Yeah, that's it, you know, like and just finding what you're good at, what you like to do, and then start doing those things. Like I like you know, around the professional development space in Af- and like New Zealand mm. and and rugby, especially like we're so used to just going, okay, what do you want to study? What trade do you want to get? That's your professional development or investing and stuff, which is cool. Mm. But like, what about creating revenue, multiple, mm. multiple different income streams? Like, and we talked around that, like they, they say, Oh, how would you do that? Or you mm. go to an athlete and go, brother, what do you love to do? Mm. What's your hobbies? And they might say, I love to play PlayStation. I love connecting, mm. talking to people. Like, you know, just having coffee connects. For example, those two things. Mm-hmm. For me, I'll be like, okay, how can you monetize that as an athlete and start building that? Mm-hmm. PlayStation, create a, is it Twitch? Your Twitter? Uh, your, your Twitch, Twitch, sorry, your Twitch account. Twitch account. Yeah. Like, you know, start playing PlayStation if you love that. Yeah. And, what can, and then you may create a little, little income stream, you know, yeah. like passive income stream there. You love connecting, you love talking to people. Why don't you do a podcast? Mm. You know, you start building so, viewership. Yeah. So how does they how does they, how do they monetize off that? How do they monetize it? How how do they monetize? Well, that's it? yeah, that's another question. So they think, well, if I just start a podcast, then how do I get money? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, well, if you started a podcast, mm. like, and I know ICE has put something off. Like, you just want to create content, create value. Obviously, if for athletes, they've got leverage, so people would be more inclined to say yes to get interviewed by them. Mm. So you just get guests on, talk around whatever you want to talk around, mm. connect with them, put it out there through YouTube, all the different social channels. Mm. And then hopefully sponsors will see then if you've got so many viewers and subscribers and stuff like that, mm-hmm. sponsors want to come on board. People want to pay for ads. That's it. There yeah, you so you do pre-ads, you can do like- Pre-ads, ad- like what's it? During um, the- and During, like, yeah. during the podcast in yeah. the middle and then at the end. Mm. You know, and if you're doing, say for one podcast, you're making, say- Three hundred dollars a for podcast. Example, yeah. Imagine you do four podcasts a week. Mm. Or no, nah, that's stretch for a rugby player. Say you do three podcasts a week. Yeah, that's three times three. That's nine hundred bucks a week just for talking, just for talking and connecting and doing what you love. Because what you love, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's, that's just like the example, you know. And then, like you say, like that's one stream of revenue. And another one is like exactly right. You could Twitch, be doing, yeah, you know, doing a Twitch account and playing then, PlayStation all day and on on Twitch on live and people just giving you a hundred. I've seen it, bro. Like via for feeder. He's like, bro, someone donated me three hundred and fifty dollars because they just love Vaya and the Hurricanes. Whoa, yeah, three fifty, you know, like and just for doing what he loves, and yeah, and he's good at it. And part of it also is just talking to people. Mm, that's people it. Like, you know, like building that community. That's it, bro. You know, you Twitch podcast. What else you love? Vlogs. You love vlogs, like or creating, create vlogs, and that just all part of the vlogs mm. are all part of just the left jabs. Mm. So when you're doing the Twitch and the podcast and stuff like that. And then you create your own brand, then you create your own. So like, for example, you've got the ASAP, right? Yeah. So you can create it. And then off that comes um, the clothing brand. Clothing brand. And then people think around the commercial side, around brands want to align with the athlete. Now they're going, I want to align with the athlete and the dude that's doing all the podcast, the Twitch and that. Cause he's, Cause he's got more exposure. He's got the pop culture. He's, he's, got the culture at his hands you know that's so cool eh? and part of like what I mentioned around NBA is like rugby's at the moment the the media and the content is for like our our older older people Mm -hmm. and that's where rugby is at now Mm -hmm. but it's like how can we create things that are going to cater to the slot the younger generation and I think the NRL is starting to do quite nicely with that ISIS and what the YKTR sports team and YKTR boys 
what they're doing over there is unreal. Bloke in the bar. Kalen Ponga. He's Kalen doing some, Ponga, he's doing bro. Some, with unreal. With he's boys. a prime example, bro. Oh, he's man. got his 257 boys crew. Yeah, they do a podcast. They just, I think they just brought out a drink. Was it a yeah, I saw that, a drink? Hey. Which is, you know, that's bro, cool. Unreal, man. Like, so there's know? not just, I don't think, if we if you are an athlete, look at, I mean, outside of training, outside of game day, you've got a bit of time off. Yeah. You don't have to always go get yourself a trade. It doesn't always have to go get – I mean, it's good. That, I mean, that well, yeah, trade there's is, nothing wrong with not, that too, I'm, man. I just don't think I'm getting down on that. But yeah. if that's not your vibe, yeah. you're like, oh, I don't want to do – build, or I want to do a yeah. trade. Then there's that up there. Now we're, we're now becoming a digital platform. I so yeah. just – you know, you can take your laptop with you wherever you go. You take a camera wherever you go. Edits on the run as well. That's it, man. And if you're if you're not into video, if you're not into audio, you can write. Like if you love to write, imagine creating all these blog posts and yeah. and again you can monetize that as well. That's you know, it, like man. brand business will want to come on board and just sort of yeah. do that sort of thing as well. There's so many different avenues. It's exciting, bro. Yeah, it's, it's really exciting, man. I think just with the athletes, they just probably need a little bit of guidance and mm. education around that, bro. Is that something you're trying to work on as well? Yeah, man. Within, the, within your, like whoever you're, you know, within your teams that you're associated yeah. with. Well, I'm trying to just pave the way, bro. Mm. Like, because, like, I know I'm not going to be at the top, like, for years and years. You know, like, you, you know, you're always going to just slow down and come down. But mm. while I'm there, so I you're wanna, building yourself an exit strategy. Yeah. Pretty and much. also paving the way for athletes and giving them permission to be able to do what they do, you know? Mm, that's awesome. You know, so part of that's just starting the new, mm. um, but also just trying to create an exit strategy, like you say, mm. or not even an exit strategy. Or just to like an after the game, you yeah, know, not, not an exit strategy, that's the wrong thing to say. But just like dabble into different areas so I know mm. which things I love to do or want to do post footy. That's it. You never know, I might not even, you know, <laughs> ja, ja. <laughs> study <laughs> yeah 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 exactly right you that, that's the beauty of it you're not you don't have to box yourself in anything oh. and don't think that oh i'm just a rugby player so that's all I, that's all i'm allowed to be yeah. right you know like people keep saying bro don't do that just play rugby mm. i mean i think i remember you remember mentioning one time you wanted to start a clothing brand and someone must said to you bro just stick to rugby yeah and like you know what yeah. I mean? Like, so yeah. there's definitely opportunities out there, and it's exciting that you're leading the way, and a few other boys are starting to understand yeah, that. Man. Reeks is obviously he's doing he's done a bit of yeah. stuff on content. Um, Reeks, hurry up, keep doing your vlogs. <laughs> and I, I say with Aaron Smith Nugs, he loves yeah, creating man. content. Man, he's doing really well with his content. Goat, you know? And I know Tej is really into it as yeah. well. So. Tej is unreal. He's hissing too, man, and mm. leading the way. Yeah, it's so it's so awesome to see, man. And the more athletes that do it. It just gives more permission for more athletes to jump yeah. on board, man. And um, they, you know, they can use their IP when they build their personal brand. They can use their IP for good, mm. especially at their peak now, right? I mean, yeah. now you now's the time you got the most yeah. eyes on you because yeah. that, like, business. That's what it's all about. Yeah. It's just drawing. It's just getting attention. You know, that's, that's what that's what marketing's about yeah. too, right? Yeah, and there's a line though, like you know, like there's that building the IP, but then also you got to keep the main thing of. Right. I mean, that's your main thing is the is the rugby and, and playing well. So, like, doing all that stuff but having strategies within your week mentally to be able to switch, the, flick the switch, to be able mm. to perform and perform to train, do your whatever you need to do mm. on the performance side. Mm. But, yeah, man, it's an exciting space and I can't wait, bro. The hardest thing, bro, is for, like, the new athletes and the young athletes is, like, they've got their mindset of, like, like nobody knows me. Like, why should I do that? Or, the, like, oh, no, nah, like, I haven't, they always think that like you have to be superstar to be able to promote yourself or not even promote yourself just but to create content mm. where like, man, like doesn't matter, bro. Show people that journey from when you're a nobody to, to like a superstar right. rock star. Because everyone wants to know, like they want yeah. imagine if you could film the young Artie like, coming it. through, That's you know. That's it, man. And what that does though, it allows fans to see the true you. Right. Like, you know, you're like nobody here and then fans get to know you while you're at the top. But once you go down, they bag you. But imagine sharing the whole journey, like of you come first year, yeah, and you just like drip feeding them, and then like they go, oh, it's like mm. Artie's like he's playing mean rugby, but he does podcasts. I know he's a good, you know, like mm. they know the human, and yeah. what that does is just bridges the gap from fan to player. That's it, eh? You know, and all the hopefully that may potentially help that well-being stuff and the mm. social bullying that we see now with comments. Right. I don't think that will ever change because there's some cool people out there but 
you know, hopefully that does bridge that gap. Yeah, that's it, bro. And so, and what I loved as well, I remember, I don't know if it was sure it was your off season, but you got a group together, yeah. of young athletes together, and they come and train with you. Yeah. How was that, bro? Bro, that was crazy, man. That was one of my other ideas. I just popped awesome. in my head, and I was just like, and for me, bro, like I'm a big procrastinator. Mm. So if I've got heaps of ideas, but I don't start them. But right. this one, I was like, man, okay, I'm going to get 12 people. I was going to do it for free, bro. But lucky I had my best mate. I was like, ah, it's, you got to know your worth, your mm. time. It's your time. It's your value, your knowledge that you're going to share, bro. Like, So we like, I fought hard like around like keeping it cheap for per student. Mm. But he was like, nah. So we came to an argument. Oh, not an argument, agreement. My best mate, he just got his PT paper, so I was like, fuck, it's a good opportunity mm. for me and my best mate, two kids mm-hmm. from nothing, to just do something together, bro. Awesome. Dream, like, you know, like, and I was like, bro, let's do this. Did it with the 12, had 12 kids sign up, yeah. 450 each for 12 sessions, so wow. pretty much over 12 weeks. Which is pretty good. Pretty, yeah. You know what I mean? I, like, I don't know if that's good or not, like, but after that, people were going, bro, that's so cheap. And I was <laughs> like, oh, but I'm happy. Mm. But um, it was awesome, bro. Like we had college kids, young college kids, to club players, to just like older, um, older men that just wanted to get fit mm. again, all different ranges. And then myself and Arns would train. Mm. But it was beautiful, man. And we just did did what I usually wanted to do in preseason, all- and they just joined. Awesome, bro. Yeah. Are you going to look at doing something similar again, yeah, bro? Man, is like, that something you're looking want to do a bit more? Yeah, I want to do that more with my with um, Tunga, yeah. my best mate, bro, and um, and grow that and provide value and then see how we can monetize that in the digital space and around. Because mm. imagine um, if we could take that then globally. Globally, yeah. You know, like, you that's know what I mean? That's it, man. That's it. Mm. Um, and, you know, for any other athletes out there, that's an idea and you're into that, bro, like, let's go. Yeah, Get I mean, you're it. doing that anyway, so how do you, like you say, monetize, monetize you're training it. anyway. Yeah. So like, fuck it, come and join me, come hang out. Yeah, come join me, you know, come like, hang out. Yeah, and just learn what I'm doing if you, yeah. you know. But it was real cool, man, because like, we had these like, one of the kids there signed off the Warriors, I think, or Junior Warriors, Jacob right. Laban. Awesome. But it was crazy, because these kids came in thinking, oh, all black, mm. thinking I'd be like this freak of nature of, they could lift heavy in the gym, <laughs> be fit, be fast. Bro, like, ran up hill, Mount Victoria. Jacob, like, bro, I've never seen someone run so fast up a hill. <laughs> bro, like, smashed me in conditioning. Wow. Bro, and then I had Sione, like, Halahilo, this other ta- young young Tongan kid, mm. like, smash me in, like, sprints. And I backed myself to be fast. Smash me in sprints. Me ain't Ani in sprints. And then we had... um like in the gym and like hit sessions, people just smashing me, bro. And we, I remember we had this like well-being session around, sitting around and they just said, man, I, I can't believe that, like, you know, I was like training with Artie, but also like they joked, they're like, I beat him. And I went and told all my friends that I beat him, you know, and, but it was like a good learning for these guys because, and, and, and there was some girls too, good learning for them because I was like, it just shows like, you know, you could beat me and, Hill sprints beat me in conditioning, but like there's another side to things, and that's like the mental, the yeah. well-being, getting yeah, your yeah. heart right, your the mental space. It's so the full, it's the full, pa- you know, full thing. package. And that was, I think, that was one of the highlights of starting that thing. And I think talking to my best man, I was like, man, that's we need to keep doing it. Mm. Mm. I remember watching um, some of those programs on Sky about you know about some of the players as well. And a majority of them said, look, I'm not the best player out there. But I'm definitely the hardest working. Hardest working, bro. You know, like I always work on the one percenters. Yeah, it's all about those little things. That's it, man. And you always think, bro, like to first fifteen days, like you had rock stars in first fifteen, mm. finished college, and like they never went on. Mm. Like those talented players never went on, and then the ones that did succeed were the ones that just grafted away. Mm. And so, know? do you take that mentality into sort of your business sort of environment yeah. as well? It's like, weird, eh? Like I, yeah. I kind of do, but then I don't. No, like yeah. it's, it's real weird. Like, so many skill sets and so many things we learn in rugby and how to prepare for a game. A lot of those skill over. sets crosses over to business yeah. and, and life in general, pretty yeah. much. Um, but it's amazing, though. Like, I do so much prep and I know how to, you know, prep for a game, but come to business, I'm like scratching my head. <laughs> but, you know, like, it's just, it's a weird thing. And it's all learning, right? Like, yeah. you've known, right? You've known sports since you yeah. could. 
you know, as long as yeah, you remember. Yeah, yeah. But this is a new space for it's you. It's a new space, man. You know, so you're actually learning. So I guess in a way it's fun, it's exciting because it is a new space, but you've also got those tools to help you create, you know, like strategies, mm. business plans. Yeah. Um, like you mentioned before, it's all about planning as well. Yeah, I'm you terrible know. at that, bro. <laughs> I'm still, still a work on at the moment, man. Yeah, yeah. Planning, business plans. That's awesome. <laughs> bro, it sounds like you've got so much going on. I love everything you've got going oh, on. Yeah, so yeah. Just, yeah you, you want to jump and say something just then? Or don't oh, no, nah, man. Like, But that's kind of my, my my letdown too is having so many things on. Right. Like um, I've got so many ideas, bro, and like – it kind of it kind of creates stress on me too, you know, like because I want to do this and I want to do that, I want to do this, I want to do that. Mm. But through my faith journey, man, like I've just kind of learned to understand. Um, sorry for my non-believers, like what God's put on my table, mm. not what Artie wants, but like what the Holy Spirit puts on my table, and and kind of navigating that in terms of what is what's been given to me f- for God to do. And what's actually my own selfish ways that I think will go that way, but it will take me and waste time, you know. So there's a lot of things on my table at the moment that for me, at the moment for me, but it's just doing the main things. And I think that main thing is my family first. And that all stems, that helps me when I've got that sort of my family, everything else falls into place. place. Yeah. So that was a bit, made a massive kind of learning for me this year is around. Um, I have all those ideas like my footy like footies there my clothing content and trying to build content and value for people mm. but if I'm doing all that and not focusing on my family then there's no reason so mm. I've learned to I've had that check of mm. shh, you know be at home and mm. be present mm. do that first and still will journey through that mm. and then from there bro I'm able to my heart, my my soul's fed, my mind's fed, my wife, my wife's happy, my kids are happy. Mm. <sighs> Watch out. That's awesome. That's bro. it, man. Because then your cup's full, you can that's start. That's it, bro. Yeah, that's it, man. Mm. That's awesome. And also my own time. I love my me time too, so I like it. Yeah, so bro, so just on that, so you do have some form of routine or anything like that, bro? So like, yeah. um, did you have a morning routine? How, like, what does a normal day look like? Yeah, man. You, like, so when... So when it, I've, it looks different when I'm at home and like when I'm away on tour with the boys, like yeah. in the morning, man, I'll try to get up early, early in the morning, wake up, I'll have a like a shower um, and I'll try to find like a little space. It could be either a cafe or like if we're close to a beach, go to a beach. And, and the first thing I try and do is read my devotion, mm-hmm. my word, um, and it's got an encouragement each day. And it's just, it just, just helps me set my mind and it kind of, Helps me reflect on how grateful I am, how blessed I am. Um, encourages me, bro. It's crazy, man. Some devotions each day, like I read it, bro, and it's like encouraging me with things that I'm going through at that time. And I'm like, man, that's crazy. Mm. Only God can do that. And then, so I start my day with the devotion. Then I'm like, boom, boom, boom. Grab a nice flat white or mocha, mm. um, and then. That's pretty much the main routine that I need to nail every morning. Like, is that? Do you have like a specific breakfast you like to eat as well? Oh, I like on tour poached eggs, yeah. four poached eggs on toast, avocado, and spaghetti. Yeah. There's no spaghetti, tomato sauce. Oh, yeah, bro. So that's the breakfast that I go for um, in the mornings, mm. um, and then yeah, and then after that it was just training, and then on about yeah. the day. Yeah. But that's the main thing awesome. in the morning. I love to do at home. Um, I'm still working on it and trying to find times where I can read my devotion. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, I get home and wake up. Got to get the kids ready. Kids pro- yeah, yeah. But yeah. Sasha's probably listening. Goes, you don't get that kids ready. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you just lie in bed. No, those ones. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, get up, try and help Sas um, with the kids. Um, drop off. Do drop offs mm. from my oldest daughter to to Kindy and then those are special moments in themselves, yeah. eh, bro? You know bro, what I mean? Those are like special moments. Bro. Holding their hand, walking into yeah. school daycare, and um, you know that's what that's that's our why. You, that's just, our you know why, what I bro. mean? Like that's it. It's the yeah. small things, man. Mm. Like I always say, faithful in the small. It's the it's the small things that make that means a lot. Mm. Um, and probably one of the main things that I love to do in the mornings when I'm at home is walk my dogs because mm. that's like. Me walking my dogs for an hour, chuck my headphones on, mm. listen to my worship music or um, listen to my devotion mm. or listen to podcasts or whatever music I'm feeling to. I just sit there with my thoughts, 
more ideas um, and just like talk to myself and just like, yeah, bro. Awesome. But that's one of the main things I love to do at home is take my dogs for a walk awesome. or yeah. run. And it's kind of the morning routine, bro. But once I nail the morning, man, my rest of the day is fine. That's it, eh? Yeah. That's, it. that's the awesome, mm. bro. And so, bro, as we start wrapping it up here, and yeah. I thank you so much for your time. I we really could talk all day. Sorry, bro. bro Sorry, fans, if I've been talking and Stacey's asked me a question, I've just gone like, yeah. No, it's good, though, because I want to hear, you know, I want to hear yeah, the sort man. of the, your thought process and the way yeah. you look at life. And then just, yeah. like, I just love that saying, you're more than an athlete, bro. Yeah, you know, bro. like, you're, well, yeah. I don't really see you too much as, a, as an all-black or a mm. rugby player. I love seeing you as a creator. I love seeing you being as the father. I love seeing yeah. you be... As the you, content bro. creator, and and I know you've just recently just found your passion really into your content creating. You yeah. know? like I'm excited bro. to see what you're going to be. Bro, one up. day, man, I'd love to just be like, am I put on my contract and be like, oh, I'm going to take the year off, and then come in, get hired to be the content creator for the team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's like, go! That's exactly, you know, How good would that be? be all, like, yeah, you Is know, it the dream, bro. That's like, I'd love to just create and and create vlogs and like have fun and mm. educate. Um, but you know, we gotta ask my wife and see what she wants to do, bro. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. like with all these things, man, and all these dreams that I'm trying to pursue, I'm just grateful, man, just to be alive, um, to have my life and 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 where I've been now, and mm. have my kids, my wife, mum and dad, um, my brother, my family. Like I, with all these things that I'm trying to pursue and 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 achieve and being all black and that, but I like. Yeah, my outlook is I'm just always grateful, bro. It's I'm awesome. blessed and like appreciate like you, you know, obviously, and um, just being able to just connect and talk. Yeah, I love that. Thank you, bro. Mm. I think it's a nice way to sort of end it on party on that. Yeah, bro, thing. hard. All right, thank you so much my for man. your time, brother. Appreciate you, brother. Yeah, likewise, always. So thanks again, again for guys for for listening. Um, subscribe. Love, we're going to be putting out a whole lot more content like this. Check out Uncommon. Um, that's a great platform. Check out what Arj is doing with ASAP Clothing. He's doing some cool stuff with him and Sars. So, um, yeah, this is just the beginning, and I'm excited to see what's coming up. Thank you so that's much so again, brother. Let's go. Too much. Boom. Boom.